Let's start lecture 34. The course is corrosion protection methods. We have been discussing a change in electrode potential and associated corrosion protection and we could see that there are two uh, main modes of corrosion protection. One is cathodic protection, another one is anodic protection. Uh, in uh, the mechanism wise, uh, uh, in one case which is cathodic protection, we want to make the metal as cathode and in case of anodic protection, we want that particular metal object which is to be protected as anode. Now uh, we have uh, distinct differences between these two. So let us look at all those differences and try to analyze uh, those differences as well as we will also see that in within the cathodic protection, we have two segments. One is impressed current cathodic protection, another one is sacrificial anode. So now these two methods also will be characteristically uh, they are uh, nearly same because both the cases we are making the metal object to be which is to be protected as cathode, but uh, there are some distinct differences. We would also try to look at those differences. And at the same time, whenever we try to have this cathodic protection, there could be possibility of some problems to the nearby structures. So that particular problem is actually termed as stray current corrosion. Okay. So that also would like to see. So let us look at uh, some of the uh, specific aspects of anodic and cathodic protection and then we will go to the aspects of uh, ICCP and sacrificial anode both belong to cathodic protection. So now if we try to look at uh, uh, the differences in anodic and uh, cathodic protection. If we try to look at the uh, arrangement part or design part, so in case of cathodic uh, protection, we can have one design could be like this. You have, so this is my art surface. Now on top of it, we can have an a rectifier where this end is negative terminal and this end is positive. So, this is actually DC power source. So, we can it we call it rectifier because if you have AC service then you can convert to DC and it has to be maintained DC all the time. Now, this is connected to let us say a tank is to be protected. Let us say this is my iron tank or steel tank and this is connected by conducting wire and then the other end is to be connected to auxiliary anode. And this is inert because the self corrosion of this anode should be as minimum as possible. Now, it means that self corrosion minimum. So, that means it actually acts as a kind of completion of the circuit and current would always leave this surface and current enters to the steel tank all the time. So, then the steel tank will be protected. Now, this auxiliary anode is always content in a backfill. So, this is a backfill, it is a porous bag. So, this is backfill. And generally, it is made of coke, clay, or gypsum. 
fine. Now uh, the function of backfill is if I try to look at the function of backfill. So, it actually maintains low resistive path for the charge flow or the uh, current flow. Now, that low resistive part actually enhances current output. Okay. So, this is uh, one of the major advantage and the second advantage is it actually maintains uniform current distribution. Okay. Now, why it is important? Let us say in a local zone, we have a very low resistivity. So, that means the current would like to flow through that part and when current only comes out through this part, then the total current which will be needed for a kind of sufficient protection of that steel tank that may not be met. So, we have to have a kind of situation that everywhere around that particular anode my path resistance should be as uniform as possible. Now, this is more problematic in case of sacrificial anode, we will talk about that little later. But the two major functions which is basically the five uh, function of backfill that is needed. Now, this is one of the ways to arrange a protection for steel tank and here we are making this steel tank as cathode and this is a part of cathodic protection. So, we are talking about cathodic protection design. And this part since we are connecting it to an external DC power source, it is called ICCP or impressed current cathodic protection. Now, one more thing because this wires are connecting this terminals. So, let me put it in a different color. So, this is my wire which is connecting anodes and cathode. Now, these wires must be insulated properly. So, this insulation is very important and in fact insulation at this location. Now, let us say this is made of copper and here it is steel which is nothing but iron. Now, if at this location insulation is poor, then there could be galvanic couple which can form locally. And since we know that copper is cathodic in compared to iron, then there could be a local dissolution in the steel tank. So, that is what the insulation of those wires must be very good, otherwise there could be a local galvanic cell. So, this is the design of impressed current cathodic protection and for the auxiliary anode we can use like a high silicon steel, we talked about that very cheap option graphite. Graphite is good, but the major problem with graphite is that it is very brittle. In fact, high silicon steel is also brittle, but it is better than graphite, but high silicon steel is the problem is it is a very humongous size. Now, coming to uh, some of the better ones, nowadays people are using mixed metal oxides. mainly titanium best, titanium iridium those kind of substance. So, those mixed metal oxides can serve as a very good inert anode and at the same time self dissolution rate would be very, very low. In fact, that actually forms an oxide layer on top of it 
and that oxide layer protects it from further corrosion, but at the same time that oxide layer can have sufficient conductivity to release uh, uh, to uh, let the current flow through. So, this is about uh, impressed current cathodic protection. Now, this is the design part and now the second part which is uh, we call it sacrificial anode. So, this is impressed current cathodic protection then we can have one more sacrificial anode. Uh, the design simplistic design part is let us say this is my earth crust. We have a tank or pipeline let us say this is my iron pipeline. steel pipeline and that can be connected to a dissolving anode. Now, in this case this dissolving anode can be made of zinc alloy, mainly zinc, magnesium or aluminum we add little bit of alloying elements to those to avoid uh, too much of self degradation or self corrosion. Now, this dissolving anode these are again connected by conducting wire and uh, here also we can put backfill. Okay. Now, here also if it is steel and if it is zinc and we know uh, as per our uh, understanding in the galvanic series iron or steel stays far above than zinc than magnesium and in fact, uh, aluminum is 1.60. So, aluminum comes in between magnesium. So, all those can act as active dissolving metal. Fine. Now, here what happens since it is they are dissolving, we have understood the mechanism part of it in our early lectures. So, they will dissolve and they will supply electron and it will be cathodically polarized. And this is zinc. So, the current will flow out and enter into it. Now, at times there could be a design modification. For example, if it is a large pipe and current always would like to find a low resistance path. So, it may happen that the current would enter into this on the, 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 the anode which is stationed in front of the pipe. So, that particular part will be protected better than the other part because the current is not may not enter uniformly around that cross section. Now, that time there could be a design modification, one could add one more anode here, one more anode and then connecting it to this end. So, that all the time current enters, this is another anode, current enters into the steel pipe and it will get protected. Now, if we try to find out uh, uh, what could be the efficiency anodic efficiency of those anode materials or rather what could be the basic characteristics of those anode material. Those anode material if I try to find out the characteristics of anode material. it should be non polarizing
So, the major problem with some of those anodes like aluminum that it can get anodically polarized and it can form passive layer and once passive layer forms that would the polarity changes. So, if polarity changes then that case this sacrificial anode can be a very very dangerous situation. So, that time steel pipe will corrode rather than getting protected. Now, this is non polarizing electrodes or the metal. Second part is sufficient current supply or we can say uh, we can actually talk in terms of anodic efficiency. If we consider certain amount of current let us say 1 ampere current always we would like to send. Now, that sufficient current supply or output. Third, the driving potential that means, the potential polarized potential rather of steel minus polarized or maybe I can say open circuit potential anode, it should be sufficiently positive. positive. Now, as per the criteria, so there is one criteria NASA criteria. So, can you stop? I just would like to take out the full name of NASA. So, NASA criteria. So, there are different criteria on that are used, criteria that are, that are used. The most popular one which is minus 850 millivolt with reference to copper copper sulphate reference electrode. For steel, this is applicable to steel. So, that means, the polarized potential of the steel tank or steel pipe which is to be protected using the sacrificial anode mode, it has to have minus 850 millivolt minimum. Okay. So, that is the voltage and if it has that minus 850 millivolt, then it will get sufficient protection. Now, if I try to look at uh, zinc. So, it is OCP again with respect to copper, copper sulphate, it is close to around 1.1 volt. So, now I can look at uh, what should be my around that. So, that time I can have the driving potential would be equal to minus 850 plus and this is of course, minus sign plus millivolt. So, it becomes 250 millivolt. Okay. So, the 250 millivolt is my driving potential or 0.25 volt is the driving potential. So, it means that the, the steel tank or steel pipe would always remain negative or cathode all the time. So, the, and for example, in case of magnesium it will be more than that. For example, in case of magnesium OCP with respect to copper, copper sulphate is of the order of 1.55 volt. So, driving potential if I try to find is 
is close to around 1.55 minus plus minus 0 0.850 volt it becomes Seven hundred volt, seven hundred millivolt, or seven point seven volt, or which is close to seven hundred millivolt. So that means there is a huge driving potential, and at the same time, we can actually calculate the theoretical efficiency of the anode uh, in terms of ampere hour per kg of the anode. Now let's say. Uh, let us consider magnesium. Let us calculate the theoretical efficiency. So, if we look at magnesium, that magnesium atomic atomic weight rather or mass is uh, twenty four point three zero. 5 unit or if I consider in terms of gram this is. Now, theoretical anodic efficiency it means that when and magnesium anode is dissolving and that time every time it will every atom dissolves that means there will be two electrons that will be left to the anode surface. So, now if it dissolves completely, so there could be a large number of that means 2 into Avogadro number that will be the number of electrons that will be released and accordingly we can calculate what could be the charge that is available for protection. So, that particular charge amount if we convert in terms of current hour per kg of anode dissolution that will be my anodic efficiency or theoretical anodic efficiency. Now, so we know that magnesium when dissolves it releases two electron it goes to magnesium plus plus. So, this is the reaction. So, it means that if you want to dissolve one mole of magnesium we need is equivalent to 96500 coulomb into 2. So, this 2 comes from there and this 96500 is nothing but charge of 1 mole electron, 1 mole electron. It is basically 96488 around that considering the electron charge to be 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 and Avogadro number to be 6.023 into 10 to the 23. But if we roughly take it as uh, uh, 1.6 and 6, then you would get around 96488 or 486. Roughly it is rounded off and then it becomes 96500 Coulomb into 2. Now, how do we uh, express theoretical efficiency in terms of ampere hour per kg. So, this is my efficiency. So, that means it says that if I need if I supply 1 ampere current then 1 kg of substance will protect the material for 1 hour. Now, in terms of kg if we want to mention so, 24.305 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg equivalent to 96500 into 2 coulomb. So, per kg how many coulomb? Coulomb per kg. Now, if I try to look at ampere hour per kg, we can write 1 ampere into 3600 second. 1 hour is nothing but 3600 second. 
divided by kg, 1 ampere is 1 coulomb per second. So, it becomes 366 coulomb per kg. Now, if this is equivalent to 1 ampere hour per kg, then I can calculate 961 kg of magnesium if it dissolves, how much should be the ampere hour we can calculate. You will get uh, the value we can calculate and on 2205.8 around that value ampere hour per kg. So, it means this theoretical efficiency means what it indicates? It indicates if 1 ampere current is the output. So, then 1 kg of magnesium can, so that means this is output required for protection. So, then 1 kg of magnesium can protect for 22.0 around that many hour. Okay. So, it indicates that, but generally those uh, anodes they will have their self corrosion. For example, if you take magnesium anode, let us say this is my magnesium anode, it will dissolve and then supply current. Okay, that is the current output, this is the magnesium anode, but it can also have its own self corrosion. For example, here oxygen reduction is taking place. So, for that we need 4 electron. So, now 4 electrons should come due to the dissolution of 2 magnesium atom. Fine. So, this is my self dissolution. And because of this self dissolution, the actual efficiency what we get that means the actual protection current output what we get for a certain period of protection that will be much less. So, in case of magnesium at least pure magnesium it is close to around 50 to 60 percent efficiency. Okay, this is actual efficiency, fine. So, which is much less than the theoretical efficiency. So, that means if I consider 50 percent, so magnesium ampere average would be would be around close to 1103 ampere hour per kg. So, 1 kg of magnesium can protect a component steel component for 1103 hour if 1 ampere is the current output that is needed. So, that is the magnesium for zinc if we consider uh, actual efficiency anodic efficiency so in case of zinc it is close to around 90 percent to 90 to around 93 percent. 
aluminum it is close to around 95 percent. So, that is the kind of efficiency we get, but what would be the time scale that is to be protected that 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 is basically the time time scale for the protection of a particular component that might vary because initial theoretical efficiency could be different depending on the oxidation number as well as the initial atomic weight of that particular active metal. Now, in fact, nowadays uh, uh, people are doing lot of uh, this, there are a lot of researches to find out alternate material. For example, there is one more criteria which is needed for, a, for an effective sacrificial anode. It should be non toxic. For example, zinc can be toxic to the sea creatures as well as it should be low cost because zinc, aluminum, magnesium, magnesium would be the costliest one, aluminum could be the cheapest one among aluminum, zinc and uh, magnesium, but uh, uh, aluminum could be the cheapest, magnesium could be the costliest. But nowadays people are also trying to find out uh, sacrificial anode made out of pig iron, high phosphorus pig iron. So, this is a kind of a recent discovery which is high phosphorus pig iron. So, that is a kind of a latest uh, uh, sacrificial anode which is a descent which has a descent uh, efficiency around 85 to uh, 90 percent though it is not matching with uh, magnesium uh, matching with uh, uh, zinc or aluminum, but it is far better than magnesium. And interestingly, this is very low cost material because this can be obtained by from uh, uh, the from the blast furnace, which is the first step for making steel. So, this is a, a kind of recent development. Fine. So, if it succeeds then definitely uh, 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 there could be a lot of possibilities uh, of using it and having a kind of effective protection. So, these are some of the criteria uh, uh, for a material to be quali to, to get qualified for use as sacrificial anode. Of course, there is one more criteria which is to be needed. So, if I consider the one more criteria. So, that is uh, 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 the processing. Okay. Zinc is very popular because zinc coating is very easy to form on steel plate, but magnesium coating is difficult because magnesium is very reactive. Aluminum also there could be possibility of oxide layer formation. So, that is what galvanization is a very common practice. We use zinc coating because it is a low melting compound, a low melting element at the same time uh, what we can do uh, just take a steel plate and then dip it. Of course, the complications are there, process complications, but it is fairly easy to coat zinc on top of aluminum, uh, on top of iron, and that is what we get galvanized iron sheet. So, it is an easy processing. So, I can say ease of processing and uh, of course, when we talk about low cost, it associates with processing as well as availability. Okay. Now, uh, uh, coming to the connections, if I look at the connection part, here also insulation is very important, otherwise here also there could be local galvanic cell. Let us say if the conductor wire which is connecting anode and sacrificial anode, sacrificial anode and the metal steel pipe line, if there you have loss of insulation, so then at these locations we can have local galvanic cell at these locations and then you can have a serious dissolution of both steel pipe line or zinc because copper is cathodic to both steel and zinc. So, that should be avoided. Now, this is as per the uh, 
uh, the kind of design what we have for cathodic protections. So, we will also discuss the design of anodic protection and also look at some of the characteristics of anodic protection. So, before we end one thing we can tell that this both ICCP as well as uh, sacrificial anode in case of ICCP definitely you need external power source as well as uh, the design part is bit more complicated than sacrificial anode because the sacrificial anode connection is very uh, convenient because you just have to connect a uh, steel part with the magnesium or zinc. But uh, ICCP needs little bit of little bit of design modification, design aspects to be uh, seriously looked at because you have to always connect it to a rectifier, positive end and negative end. Negative end should be always connected to uh, the steel pipe and there should not be any polarity reversal. Those corrections have to be, those, those, those concerns are there. But as of now, whatever we see that connectivity thing both in those cases compared to anodic polarization we will see later on it is much much more convenient. Now one more thing is generally cathodic protection we employ when the resistivity of the uh, soil or the electrolyte is less. So that time we generally employ this. Okay. So but we will talk about those differences uh, or those characteristics in, in, in association with anodic protections that will make our understanding clear. So, till then let me stop here. Thank you.